Adam's kin, uh, kin and I've come from Barnsley and I'm actually representing my daughter who can't come. Um, she, um, she got pregnant at 18 and, um, and about the same time she started getting problems with her, with her body hurting and she's found out six years ago that she had actually got fibromyalgia. She's also got chronic fatigue, hypermobility, IBS, OCD, borderline personality disorder, hypersensitivity, tinnitus, depression and anxiety. When, she was, when her daughter was two and a half, because she wasn't looking after her properly, they were going to take her into care. So uh, I took her on and um, she's lived with me since then. So she's ten and a half now. And um, she's, uh, she's um, struggled to live in her house. So they moved, she moved in with me because she said she wanted to be near her daughter. I live in a house. She was, she was um, isolated in the bedroom because it was near the bathroom. She didn't want to come downstairs because it hurt so much. So eventually she said, I'll see if I can get a flat, Mum. So um, in um, January of last year, they... They told her she needed a two-bedroom ground floor flat because she needed somewhere for her daughter to go because she wanted to see her at weekends and holidays when she went to school. So that's what they gave her. That was just before everyone started talking about the bedroom tax. And we thought she would be exempt because she had circumstances with her daughter. Um, we found out since that's not the case because I get the child benefit and I get the working tax credit for her. She's not entitled to a bedroom because her family consists of her and no one else. So they won't, they told that she's got to be paying the bedroom tax. Since then, oh, she's also wheat and lactose intolerant, so she can't eat anything with wheat in and she can't eat anything with milk in. All her painkillers have made her like this because they've given her the sensitivity with all the milk proteins on the on the tablets that she's on. Um, so she's not she's struggled with her diet already, and now she's been getting really bad pains, which for a long time she put down to fibromyalgia, but she's now found out that she's actually got gallstones. And she's also got something called NASH, which is a, a non-alcoholic steri hepatitis. And she's in the second stage of that. Um, she's got to have an operation, have her gallbladder removed, and they're going to try and sort something out with this other illness. But now she can't have fat in her diet or, or uh, any form of sugar or sweeteners. So she's waiting for the dietitian to tell her what she can actually eat, because at the moment she just lives off fruit but she can't afford the fruit either because fruits a lot of times are so expensive in the supermarkets and that. So whatever she does, she struggles. She's, she's on um, a, a DLA and they tell them that they're going to take that off her. If, when they bring the pip in, she probably won't get it anymore because she's on the lowest component. She's, um, um, she's been told she's got to go to work. She was actually supposed to go to the um, uh, agency that that work out uh, you know, that she's got to go to or they stop the benefits. She was actually supposed to go there the week that she was rushed into hospital because she's got these pains shooting through her body and that's when they diagnosed this NASH condition she's got. Um, she says, what can I do, Mum? I've got to pay the bedroom tax because I've got nowhere for Kaylin to sleep otherwise. She says, that she can't sleep with me because she's a 10-year-old. She jumps up and down and she says every pain goes through her body when she just walks through the, through the door normally. My granddaughter also wets the bed because obviously she's gone through a lot in her little life. And uh, she's, she can't even sleep on the sofa without wetting on it. And uh, she says, I've got to keep doing this because otherwise I won't see her at all. And uh, we're hoping that as she gets older and she can look after herself a bit more, that eventually she may go and live with her mum again when she's at secondary school, which will be like from next year onwards, she might be old enough to go and stay with her mum. But she says, I can't stand the pressure that they're putting me under. Uh, and, and also the bedroom that Caitlin does sleep in when she stays, she can't sleep in it because it's full of damp. It's got mould all over it. They won't sort it out. She lives in a, an area that's full of wells. 
And, uh, and so there's lots of damp. She's a ground floor flat, which is below the, ground, the, the water level, so it, it gets very damp, and they won't do anything about it. And uh, basically, she's just got a miserable existence, really. And, but she's, I've got to keep two bedrooms so that if Caitlin comes by, she's got somewhere to stay. Thank you for listening. <laughs>